What's up everybody, this is Jason with MDI and today we are giving you another full in-depth review of the new Motua Lite 2 made by Guzhen. Now this is the second version and it does come with a lot of very welcome updates. Now there are three tiers as far as which kind of package you want. We have the premium package which is right in the middle. There is a basic package for $10.99. The premium package is for $12.99, and then you have the professional package, which is $15.99. And one of the major differences is the premium package does come with this really nice updated tuning stand, and then once you get to the professional package, you have a nice large uh, watertight case. It's not actually not that large, it's actually on the small side, but if you travel a lot with your gimbal, that case is definitely going to be something you want to look into. So. Uh, moving right along, some awesome things is, as you can see, this is a much different stand than what you're used to seeing. Uh, it's actually made out of solid metal. It's got this really nice design. From here you'll see there, there are two little thumb uh, buttons, and basically what that allows it to do is you can unlatch it and latch it for the study arms here. And this part here does not have a thumb screw, it actually just closes. And once you get everything collapsed, it comes down into a very nice small traveling size. Another awesome update here is if you take a look here at the bottom, we have a USB power out and we also have another DC output as well. Some really cool things that I can think of right off the bat. If you use a Nyrus wireless HD uh, broadcasting transmitting system, so let's say that you have a video village and you want to make sure that the director can see what you're actually capturing with the gimbal. You can use the Nyrus and get it actually powered through here. Traditionally, you would have to use one of those little USB power banks, attach it to the Nyrus, then to the HDMI port, and that can get kind of um, can get kind of difficult when you're trying to mount it onto a gimbal system. So that's really nice to see that they do offer some kind of USB power out. And of course, if you have any other USB power out. Um, accessories, you can use that as well. From here, this DC output is a 14.8 volt, so what my guess is if you have a wireless uh, motor follow focus system, which you can attach to these two rods here, you can also power it through here. This is great because, again, if you have to attach a bunch of accessories that require power to do what you want on the gimbal, whether it's racking focus or sending wireless video system feeds, Having this all centrally located and running off of the intelligent battery on the back is awesome. Speaking of the battery, this is a new type of battery and it gives you probably about three to five hours of use. Uh, we never actually used it all the way to the very end, but we did do a 48 hour shoot, which we shot for about uh, maybe about five or six hours and we turned it on and off every so often and we didn't run out of battery. Um, at all. So that's definitely very great. Uh, other things is we do have that same remote control that you are used to and from this wireless remote control you can you know pitch the gimbal up and down, you can rotate it left and right, panning, and you can of course go through the different modes whether you want it to be on all lock mode, follow mode, everything can be done through the wireless remote here. A very nice update here if you take a look is the cage itself. The cage in the back looks like it has a lot more clearance than before. So if you're using a heavier lens like a Sigma 18-35, which a lot of people like to use on a GH4, you will have a lot more room to actually push the camera back to make the balance. Or let's say that you do have a wireless follow focusing system in the front. It's going to make your gimbal a little front heavy. So you can definitely attach some weights here in the back and still be able to clear uh, the bar back here. Now the Moldau Light 2 is rated up to 11 pounds, but based on how the cage is designed, I wouldn't try to put you know, some crazy Sony FS7 or whatever on it. I would say you're good with a GH4, Canon 5D, probably a C100 and a Blackmagic production camera. So those are probably the cameras you want to stick with. I wouldn't try to put anything larger on here because it might not be able to handle the weight. Now if you take a look up here, they do actually offer you a really awesome camera mounting plate which is even available in the basic package. So let's say you like to do a lot of jib shots, well you can now adapt your gimbal onto a jib followed by the wireless remote. Now you can make those kind of semi-techno crane shots so it can be coming down from the height of the jib and then you can also pan the gimbal at the same time which is awesome. Uh, if you are on a car, 
you could potentially mount it onto a car mount and be able to operate the camera from inside the car, again, with the wireless remote. Now, all these new updates are definitely very welcome. The only missing feature that was on the original Motoa Lite was on the bottom here, it was actually an SD wireless trans, uh, video transmitter, which then gave you a little SD wireless monitor that, again, the gimbal operator can use and see. Now, while this is missing, we don't really think that that's, um, that doesn't seem to affect the way we would like to use it. So, but that's just something to consider if that feature was important for you. Now you'll also notice next to the battery here is a bunch of ports and from here you can either uh, update the firmware, do some fine tuning, all that good stuff. Now it does come with a rubber cover this time, the first generation did not. So if you are out in the rain or snow or any kind of crazy weather, having this rubber uh, cover on the front is definitely good for your peace of mind when you're using your gimbal in harsher elements. Setting up the gimbal really isn't that bad, especially if you are an experienced gimbal user. It's all pretty self-explanatory. However, if you are a pure beginner and this is indeed your first gimbal, if you go to the Gutsin website, they actually have a series of setup videos for you that will get you up and going right away. Now as far as being the operator of the gimbal, it is actually not that bad, as again, the name suggests it is a light version, so therefore it's actually not that heavy. And considering how long we used it on our shoot this past weekend, um, I did not really get tired at all operating with this setup. And as you can see, with the 32-bit encoders and the stronger motors, it's actually quite stable. And if we go into the all locked mode, as you can see, does a really good job stabilizing. If you want to, you can go into your briefcase mode here, or if you want to go into inverted mode, just hang onto the cage right there, and off we go. Overall, I can say that this latest entry from Goosen is actually a very good one. I would highly recommend it if you are an experienced gimbal user and or if you are just a pure beginner. Again, there are three different packages depending on what fits your budget and your needs. Now, the great thing about ordering from Goosen is actually their customer service. We had a couple questions and we would usually get an answer within 24 hours. So that's actually great. If you have some problems, their customer support are there to help you. Of course, you also have the videos that are highly detailed that will also help you as well. Now, the only time that you might run into a little bit of delay on response is if you are asking during the weekends. They don't work on the weekends or any holidays, of course. So without further ado, if this is a gimbal that you want to consider, check out this footage that we shot last weekend. And we'll see you in the comments down below. You want to see? Yeah. All right, my man, let's go. Now I invented this Talon 9 when I was uh, nine years old, no kidding. I mean, I use everything, bicycle parts, car parts, and I assure you it has nothing to do with dilithium crystals or flux capacitors. Now this dragon here, this is my first. I call it Tallulah. Oh my god, is that wow. real? Whoa. Easy there, Turbo. I didn't know dragons existed. Oh yeah. Oh, but this isn't my first. This is not my first collection. There is so much more, so much more. Wow. You guys want to see it? Yeah, uh, All right. definitely. Who's a good dragon? Who's a good dragon? Daddy loves you, yeah. All right, guys, let's go. Uh, I don't think this is. <laughs> Oh, we'll be fine. Hey, just watch out for the cobwebs as you come down here. <laughs>